All right. Hello, everybody. Sorry, I'm in kind of a looks like a prison or something. It's actually a dorm. <laughs> so uh, I'm at uh, the Sioux, and we're doing the opera festival, and we're staying at the dorms in uh, Lake uh, Superior State University. And I did not get all of the videos done in time, so instead of being able to do them at my studio, I'm doing them here. So I am sorry about number one. I don't have a piano. Number two, it's a little dark and weird in here. But that's why. But I figured we should still talk about some of the excerpts uh, that we have left to go over. Um, the Duca and what I want to go over today, which is the Tchaikovsky. I'm not going to go over the, uh, um, the Elgar because it's kind of self-explanatory. As long as you listen to those two, uh, uh, movements of the Elgar, um, that's the one that, yeah, yeah I'll show you. Looks like this. Whoa. Not like this. Sorry. <laughs> like this. That one. That's the Elgar, and um, that's the Enigma variations. And if you look on there, it's pretty easy because it's movement eight, if you know how to read your Roman numerals, and uh, movement 10. So you should be able to find those, listen to them. It's a lot of standard violin stuff, lots of shifting up and down, so I'm not going to go over those. I will go over the Tchaikovsky at least a little bit, though. Uh, so the very beginning of the Tchaikovsky, this is uh, Symphony Number no. 6. Uh, I can show you what this one looks like, too. <laughs> Just to make sure we're on the same page. Uh, if you have not heard Symphony Number no. 6, by the way, a lot of people say it's Tchaikovsky's best work, and I think it's a pretty good one. Uh, so I would I would listen to the whole thing. Uh, I know it's like 40 minutes or something like that, but still, you should listen to it. Okay. Um, at least uh, this movement, which is the la or the fourth movement, actually. It's five movements. It's a, a, a tragic symphony, so it actually ends with a fifth uh, a minor movement, which is interesting. Anyway, um, so the beginning, standard violin stuff. Lots of shifting. Right there, what I do, I leave my one down and I extend. If you want to practice that, there's lots of ways, of course, that you can practice that little shift. Uh, it's not really a shift, it's more of like a reach, right? Um, then the next few lines here is just a lot of shifting back and forth between first position and third position. I'm not going to go over that because we should know how to shift <laughs> from first to third. Uh, but I do want to go over X just a teeny tiny bit. Uh, so anytime we have these like super fast uh, kind of lead up scales, um, it's good to have a really good fingering so that we don't have to shift like 15 times in the middle of, you know, like a 20 note run or something like that. Um, luckily with this one, what we can do, I'm going to, I'm looking at the, uh, the little, uh, the, the 32nd notes right at X uh, after the little triplet eighth note thing. Uh, if I go up, in third position. I have a half step between that B and that C, so that's a good place for a little sneak shift. And then you can just come back down in uh, first position. And then, of course, the five figure. What I usually use to think of the five figures in my head is university, because it has five syllables. And that's how I kind of figure that part out. Um, so yeah, I would definitely practice those until they're nice and quick. I got to obviously do that myself. <laughs> uh, but let's go ahead. Let's uh, talk about why a teeny tiny bit. Uh, so really, most of it, the shifting and all that's kind of self-explanatory. I mostly just want to go over it uh, just in case you have any questions in your head. Hopefully, this will kind of alleviate any of those. Fourth. Now this you gotta shift up quite a bit. Shift down. And then I stay in second and go up on the A. And then this is a pretty hard little scale down. What I like to do is I'm taking a little bit of a leaf out of uh, uh, the fingering you can find in Paganini Caprice number four. Uh, 
and I'm making sure that when I go down, I'm using that harmonic to help me find where that four should go so I can do a big shift down like that. Um, I'm gonna go all the way down. and so forth. Let's go to uh, the pickup into AA since that's where we start to get a little bit of uh, um, some goofy chromatic stuff because of course it's Tchaikovsky, right? I go over to the A string. Then I jump down. I sneak, by the way, right there. Oh gosh, it's cut off. It's There's a zero at the beginning of the line. I know that can't possibly be the measure number, uh, but this is the line right below uh, the AA. I jump really quick into third position. Cause that's just a little easier to do. And then of course you just have some and so forth. This one is pretty self-explanatory, so I didn't want to spend a whole lot of time going over it. Mostly wanted to play it so that you know what it sounded like in case you haven't heard it, uh, but I would listen to this one. It's a really good symphony. Uh, you can look up some of the interesting historical information that surrounds this symphony, some of the controversies and all that kind of cool stuff, um, but also just listen to it because it's a really, really good symphony. It's, you know, Tchaikovsky's last symphony, so kind of big culmination of all of his uh, compositional powers. Okay, hope you guys, uh, um, hope this helped you out a little bit, and happy practicing.